Greetings to all of you, my dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends. And all of you are welcome to my new broadcasting of the Spirit of Christ. This is your pastor, Yeti. Today we're going to talk about the Spirit of Power. And our scriptures, verses are from Acts 1, the verse 5 and 8. For John baptized with water, but then a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The disciples had heard from John the baptism of the Spirit. Jesus had spoken to them of the Father's giving of the Spirit to those that asked him, and of the Spirit of their Father speaking in them. And on the last night he had spoken of the Spirit dwelling in them, witnessing with them, having come to them to convince the world. All these thoughts of what this coming of the Holy Spirit would be were thus connected in their mind with the work they would have to do and the power for it. When our Lord gathered up all his teaching and the promise, you shall receive the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. It must have been to them the simple summing up of what they looked for, a new divine power for the divine work of being the witnesses of a crucified and risen Christ. This was in perfect harmony with all they had seen in Holy Scriptures of the Spirit's work. In the day before the flood, he had been striving with man in the mysteries in the ministry of Moses he fitted him and the seventy who received of his spirit for the work of ruling and guiding Israel and gave wisdom to those who built God's house in the day of the judges he gave the power to fight and conquer the enemies in the time of kings and prophets he gave boldness to testify against sin, and power to proclaim a coming redemption. Every mention of the Spirit in the Old Testament is connected with the honor and kingdom of God and the fitting for service in it. In the great prophecy of the Messiah, with which the Son of God opened his ministry and Nazareth, has been anointed with the Spirit had the one object of bringing deliverance to the captives and gladness to the mourners, to the mind of the disciples as students of the Old Testament and followers of Christ Jesus. The promise of the Spirit could have but one meaning, fitness for the great work they had to do for their Lord when He ascended the throne. All that the Spirit will be to them personally in His work of comforting and teaching, sanctifying the soul and glorifying Jesus, where but as means to an end. Their endowment with power for the service of their departed Lord. Would God that The Church of Christ understood this in our days. All prayer for the guiding and gladdening influence of the Holy Spirit in the children of God ought to have this as its aims. Fitness to witness for Christ and do effective service in conquering the world for Him. 
Waste of power is always cause of regret to those who witness it. The economy of power is one of the great moving springs in our organizations and industry. The Spirit is the great power of God. The Holy Spirit, the great power of God's redemption, as it comes down from the throne of Him to whom all power has been given. And can we imagine that God would waste this power on those who seek it only for their own sake, with the desire of being beautiful, holy, or wise, or good? Truly, no. The Holy Spirit is the power from on high for carrying on the work for which Jesus sacrificed his throne and his life. The essential condition for receiving that power is that we be found ready and fit for doing the work the Spirit has come to accomplish. My witness, these two words do indeed contain in divine and inexhaustible wealth of meaning. The most perfect description of the Spirit's work and our work the work for which nothing less than His divine power is needed, the work for which our weakness is just fitted. There is nothing so effective as an honest witness. The learned eloquence of an advocate must give way to it. There is nothing so simple just telling what we have seen and heard or, perhaps in silence, witnessing to what has been done in us. It was the great work of Jesus himself, to this and have I been born, and to this end am I coming into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. And yet, simple and easy as it appears, to make us witnesses of Jesus, is what the almighty power of the Spirit is needed for and what he was sent to work. If we are in the power of the eternal life, the power of the world to come, in heavenly power, to witness of Jesus as he reigns in heaven, we need nothing less than the divine power of the heavenly life to animate the testimony of our lips and life. The Holy Spirit makes us witnesses because He Himself is a witness. He shall witness of me, Jesus said, when Peter, on the day of Pentecost, preached that Christ, when He had ascended into heaven, had received from the Father the Holy Spirit and had poured Him forth. He spake of what He knew. The Holy Spirit witnesses to Him and in Him of the glory of his exalted Lord. It was this witness of the Spirit to the reality of Christ's power and presence that made him so bold and strong to speak before the council. God did exalt him to be a prince and savior, and we are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit. It is as the Holy Spirit becomes to us in a divine life and power, the witness to what Christ is and the present moment in His glory, that our witness will be in His power. We may know all that the Gospels record and all that Scriptures further teaches of the person and work of Jesus. We may even speak from past experience of what we once knew of the power of Jesus. This is not the witness of power that is promised here, and that will have effect in the world. It is the presence of the Spirit at the present moment, witnessing to the presence of the person of Jesus that gives our witness that bread of life from heaven that makes it mighty through God to the casting down of strongholds. You can truly witness to just as much of Jesus as the Holy Spirit is witnessing to you in life and truth. 
The baptism of power, the endowment of power, is sometimes spoken of and sought after as a special gift. If Paul asks very distinctly for the Ephesians who had been sealed with the Holy Spirit, that the Father would still give them the spirit of wisdom. We cannot be far wrong in praying as definitely for the spirit of power. He who searches the hearts knows that what is the mind of the spirit and will give not according to the correctness of our words, but the spirit bred the desire of our hearts. Or let us take that other prayer of Paul and plead that he would grant us to be mightily strengthened by his spirit. However we formulate our prayer, one thing is certain. It is in unceasing prayer. It is in bowing our knees. It is in waiting on God that from himself will come what we ask, be it the spirit of power or the power of the spirit. The spirit is never anything separated from God. In all is going out and working. He still ever is the inmost self of God. It is God himself who, according to the riches of his glory, is mighty to do above what we ask or think, who will in Christ gives us to be clothed with the power of the Spirit. In seeking for this power of the Spirit, let us note the mode of his working. There is one mistake we must specially beware of. It is that of expecting always to feel the power when it works. Scriptures links power and weakness in a powerful way, not as succeeding each other, but as existing together. I was with you in weakness. My preaching was in power. When I am weak, then I am strong. The power is the power of God given to faith. And faith grows strong in the dark. The Holy Spirit hides himself in the weak thing that God had chosen, that flesh may not glory in his presence. Spiritual power can only be known by the spirit of faith. The more distinctly we feel and confess our weakness and believe in the power dwelling within us, ready to work as need arises, the more confidently may we accept its divine operation, even when nothing is felt. Christians lose most, much not only by not waiting for the power, but by waiting in the wrong way. Seek to combine the faithful and ready obedience to every call of duty. However, little thy power appears to be with a deep, dependent waiting and expectation of power from on high. Let your intervals of repose and communion be the exercise of prayer and faith in the power of God dwelling in you and waiting to work through you. Your time, exertion and effort will bring the proof that by faith, out of weakness, we are made strong. Let us be clear too as the object of this power, the work it is to do. Men are very careful to economize power and to gather it there where it can be, do its work most effectively. God does not give this power for our own enjoyment, as little to use, as little to save us from trouble and effort. He gives it for one purpose, to glorify His Son. <clears throat> Those who in their weakness are faithful to this one object, who in obedience and testimony prove to God that they are ready at any cost be glorified God, they will receive the power from on high. God seeks for men and women whom He can clothe it with power. The church is looking round for them on every side, wondering at the feebleness of so much of its ministry and worship. 
let us live in the faith that the spirit of power is within us and that the Father will, as we wait on him, fill us with the power of the spirit. Let us pray. Most blessed Father, we thank you for the wonderful provision you have made for your children, that out of weakness they should be made strong, and that just in their feebleness your mighty power should be glorified. We thank you for the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of power, coming down to make Jesus, to whom all power is given, present with his church, and to make his disciples the witnesses of that presence. I ask you, O my Father, to teach me that I have the power as I have to living Jesus. May I not look for it to come with observations. May I consent that I shall ever be a divine strength in human weakness. May I consent that it shall ever be a divine strength in human weaknesses, so that the glory may be yours alone. May I learn to receive it in a faith that allows the mighty Lord Jesus to hold the power and do the work in the midst of weakness. And may by the Holy Spirit He be so present with me that my witness may be of Him alone. My beloved Father, I desire to submit my whole being to His holy power. I would bow before its rule every day and all the day. I would be its servant and humble myself to do its meanest command. And Father, I let the power rule in me, that I may be made meet for it to use. And may my one object in life be that your blessed Son may receive the honor and the glory we ask this in Jesus' name, Father. Amen.